myeloma has always been thought as a hematologic and diffuse disease. So basically the idea was that if you take a regular um, diagnostic sample from the iliac crest, you basically see what is going on. And uh, recent work um, uh, performed, among others, by Leo Rasche and Nils Weinhold has actually shown that this is not the case, but that myeloma is rather the very heterogeneously distributed and myeloma cells form so-called focal lesions, which are accumulations of myeloma cells. And these focal lesions differ both genetically and in their transcriptional profile. And this has been shown recently. However, there's still quite a lot of, uh, a lot of open questions um, regarding this heterogeneity, in particular how these cells actually start forming these, these focal lesions, how they accumulate. Um, how the heterogeneity in these lesions actually um, arises. And another important topic, um, which is links also to novel uh, therapies in myeloma, is if there are also differences in the immune microenvironment. So if you have different plasma cells and myeloma cells with different uh, new potential neoantigens and different transcription profiles and, and chemokines, are there also going to be changes in the microenvironment? could this potentially affect treatment outcomes? What we did in our study is we investigated uh, these focal lesions by performing a CT-guided biopsy and compared that, uh, the, this biopsy to the routine um, diagnostic biopsy from the crest. And um, we were using whole genome sequencing, RNA bulk sequencing, and single cell RNA sequencing and single cell attack sequencing for the tumor and single cell RNA sequencing for the microenvironment to have a really comprehensive approach and really get all the information from these focal lesions. So what we found and something we confirmed is that these focal lesions really do show a genetic heterogeneity. We are the first study to actually perform whole genome sequencing. So we can also show that previous studies which only used whole exome sequencing are actually underestimating the true extent of heterogeneity. And this also gave us the opportunity to um, use uh, some techniques to actually infer potential mechanisms for the um, right, uh, for the evolution of this heterogeneity. And what we found is that there are specific signatures, um, which are basically caused by the, uh, sorry, the specific processes. And one of the processes we identified is damaged by reactive oxygen species, um, which might cause uh, or might explain at least part of the heterogeneity of the genetic heterogeneity we see. In addition, we're also able to use uh, to combine our whole genome sequencing data with single cell RNA sequencing data, um, also showing that uh, this combined approach really um, sheds further light on, on the true extent of spatial heterogeneity. Um, because we do see heterogeneity in single cell RNA sequencing, which we don't see in whole genome sequencing, and the other way around. Um, so, suggesting that this combined approach is really useful to really understand spatial heterogeneity in myeloma. Um, furthermore, um, we also used the single cell RNA sequencing on the microenvironment, actually did discover a lot of differences in the immune, immune microenvironment, uh, in particular a depletion of macrophages in those focal lesions, and also um, differences in the distribution of clonal T cells, um, which have all been linked to um, antigen specificity. Um, yeah, so that was basically what we examined in the study. So that was another interesting finding um, where we actually had one patient where we had relapse samples and we were able to determine that um, the relapse did not arise from the iliac crest. So there was no um, co um, coincidence with the, in the mutational profiles between the relapse and, and the iliac crest, but rather from the focal lesion. So it was really, um, it seems that really the clone from the focal lesion survived and then caused not only one, but even multiple relapses. And interestingly, um, that is where the signature analysis also comes in. We were also able to identify a pattern that the therapy left on the tumor clone. And this pattern actually also helped us establish that it was just not just one cell which survived initial treatment, but rather two cells, which caused two independent relapses afterwards. So I think that further research is certainly necessary to really elucidate the uh, effects on, on immune therapy. However, there are certainly some implications um, that uh, immune that there might be a mixed response, for example, in immune therapy, which has been described before, um, which is particularly relevant with the advent of the bispecific antibodies and CAR T cells um, as novel treatments in myeloma. And so focal lesions should really be more closely examined um, 
to investigate, uh, to uh, determine if they might be the obstacle to the cure of, of myeloma. Uh, 